Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emacs and our newly released PDMA I. I'd like to thank you again for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, I have Noah Bethel, the Vice President of Product Development. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And it is sunny today. It it's is beautiful. Sunny. It's warm, very dry out there. It's a nice day today. Um, and I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And Noah, we've got a great inrush startup test for your electric motors. I know this is your favorite test, but even more importantly, it was captured with our newly released technology, PDMAI, your answer to continuous monitoring 24 hours a day for your electric motors. It is a win-win. And you're right. I, I love the inrush startup test. It is by far my favorite. Rarely do we get every one. And the beauty of the PDMAI being permanently installed is we don't miss one. That's yeah. very exciting. Now you get every inrush. And I look at them a, a lot. So why you should always acquire data during the most stressful time of an electric motor. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Great subject. So this is a great subject. And this was given to us by one of our uh, units that have a PDMAI installed. So this is data collected directly from that unit. Um, and this had to do with an extruder startup issue. Now, can you explain what an extruder is or what the importance of it? It's in the process. Uh, I imagine it's taking material and pushing it, extruding it through something. Right. And I, a lot of times I refer to it as kind of a grinder because that's the section that does the work, right? So basically you're taking a, a larger pulp, and in this situation, a larger pulp, and you're refining it to a much finer material is really the whole purpose of that. So it really just think of it as a grinder. Right. And then, so it's run by, it's operated by a motor. Mm -hmm. So there's an electric motor involved with it. And so, like you said, we collect every single inrush startup. So let's look at this one. This is a normal inrush startup. This was taken once we installed the uh, PDMAI. Um, and this looks pretty normal to you, correct? Normal in terms of, a, of, a, of the application that we're talking about. Now, for some of our more seasoned veterans out there that use, you know, the PDMA Emacs technology and they're capturing inrush, you notice there's really no inrush here. There's just sort of a gradual, you know, to a, to a startup uh, current. So what we have here is a, is a soft starter, mm -hmm. okay, which basically controls the amount of voltage and current applied and ramps it up. So it really, there's no major crushing of high current and high temperature and all that kind of stuff um, but it's still it's it's this start, inrush startup test is still an absolute great tool and you can see that it's about five seconds from beginning to end or to steady state and they and this you know motor would start a couple times a week maybe three to five and uh, it was nice to see that five second five second five second now we know that an inrush startup test is can be the most stressful and so when you call it a soft start it's kind of like helping uh, relieve some of that stress, correct? Big time, yeah. It really reduces where you're, we're, we generally suggest like maybe seven to 10 times uh, mm -hmm. current on the inrush. You don't see that on a soft start. Literally, it just kind of ramps up to the to the full startup current. Um, and, and, and so basically, it's a much less stressful environment. Yeah, because you could see here, running current is around maybe 80 amps. So seven times, that would be at 560. Right. And you can see that red dot up there. So you're absolutely right when you say it just limits that peak current yes so now we come to the actual problem test that was captured and what happened here well this is what's interesting is we get an alert on the permanently installed technology that hey we exceeded you know the the normal startup time went from 5 to 15 seconds now keep in mind we had established a 15 second standard for the for the inrush on this motor um so when it, it seems like a safe bet if you expect five seconds 15 should be more than enough no reason to go any further but in this situation we actually don't know how long it it, it ran in a startup position so you're seeing a lot more than full load amp current here for a lot longer time now notice the ramp up looks pretty normal mm -hmm. the beauty of the inrush it starts to allude to hey you know if the startup current is the same as the previous startup currents you know we're talking around 350 or so amps it can't be electrical right now you start to lean towards a machine train something is causing this extended load through the startup process so the motor's really not able to come up to speed correct right they are not getting this this you know refiner up to speed at the time it normally does we should see this steady out back down to 80 amps right and now 
this the long term effect of this if it goes through this too many times you're just going to lower the life of your asset the right killer the motor. motor is heat <laughs> yeah. yeah you're putting you're a creating lot a lot of excess heat on that insulation system the insulation system is only designed for so much capability of heat class b class f class h probably class f insulation would right. be my guess right. uh, so there's a there's an associated temperature with that and if you run it in this condition you could get close to that one of the things that we suggested the end user do is consider, because of this scenario, is consider you know lengthening the the inrush startup capture, going from like 15 to maybe 30 seconds, because first of all they all could, they could also look into the trip set point of the of the overcurrent situation. Yeah. Um, there's bound to be a rotor driven you know uh, long term trip mechanism that is going to take it out. When does that occur? If we know it's at tw at 20 or 25 seconds, then 30 would make sense. So this is actually maintenance helping process, right? Exactly right. Where we can determine now, hold on guys, um, when you get in this situation, secure this asset, don't keep starting it. And who knows, maybe they tried to start it again too, you never know. Uh, in this case here though, we the next time around, we went right back to normal again. Right. This is a very good sign because we're seeing a repeat back to the historical values. Uh, on our previous you know, podcast, we did talk about uh, uh, the importance of baselining, right? And this is another situation uh, where when it goes back to the original values, we feel pretty comfortable that we didn't do any damage to the motor at this point. Uh, but we want to keep an eye on it. Now, when we talk to the uh, individual who's responsible for this facility and asked him, he gave us... The he reason. did, yeah. When we re when when it was reported, you know, by the PDMAI that hey, we had an unusual startup, uh, we looked into it, asked some questions. The the facility, you know, the 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 really the motor owner basically contacted the facility um, and and asked them what was going on, and they said basically that in these situations, any extended shutdown requires a wash down of the refiner so that you don't have material caking up inside those grinder wheels, uh, causing an excessive loading, and and so that's exactly what was going on here. So we, we essentially helped out process and just say, hey, maybe a little bit more time utilized to ensure that the cleanliness, this is the outcome. Exactly. When we don't do it right. correctly, this is what happens. We have an elongated startup. <laughs> And as a result of that, we could potentially destroy that asset before it right. needed to be destroyed. Sure, a little reminder to the to the field guys that hey, let's don't uh, forget to wash down this motor, yeah. you know, before we start it up. And this really just kind of jumps out at us. As you can see, it's five seconds per startup startup duration. We monitor this. You can see the button there for the PDMAI, so th this is nice. It, it just seamlessly fits in if you already have an MCE or an Emax or an MCE Max. All of that is on the top side, so there's no extra software that you even have to learn. It's, it's, it's it, all the it, same. It is a very nice feature of the PDMAI being added in. For those of you who use our MC Gold and our technology, um, it really fits in so well. Yeah, and you're right about this seamless. historical trend. And you asked the question, maybe they tried to start it. Well, what's interesting is it doesn't appear that it tripped because you can see that the, the next start recorded was on, on May 30th, right? So they did get it up and running, and it didn't get shut down for quite a few days. Yeah, so maybe the call, because you had saw this, and you called <laughs> and said, hey, there was a really long startup mm -hmm. and the individual calls the plant and says hey make sure you guys are cleaning mm -hmm. this pro this extruder out before we restart it so obviously it did what it was supposed to do amen now you had said many times i've heard you we heard you at a recent asian pacific summit uh, where, hey, where we had all of our Asian reps there, that inrush startup is one of your most favorite tests. And, and here's, I guess, part of the reason why. It applies to just about everything out there. It really does. And beyond the electrical, it applies to machine train analysis, you know, power quality. It, it, I'm telling you, for every type of motor, it serves a purpose. Okay. And then even on our six-fault zone approach to an asset, or our five-fault zones here, and then some other aspects that we talked about, in our analysis uh, with the MCE Max, it has a positive effect there. Absolutely, and you can just walk through this from a power quality perspective. You can see the voltage and you know amplitude and quality. If the voltage is changing, you expect a change in startup. Uh, that's a given. So you don't want to blame. You'd hate to blame the machine train. On well, we've almost seen driven. rotor problems in an in rush startup when Absolutely. you just use it as process analysis. You see the ripple, Absolutely. kind of the frequency of the. 
Right. Uh, and that's really a current analysis, an RMS envelope, you know, plot to look at, hey, a torsional change in the normal operations. If, if that fluctuation is normal, it, it's, it's no problem. But if it's abnormal, if it's unusual compared to the baseline and historical tests, it's worth looking into. We definitely have something going on. Um, from a power circuit perspective, obviously a, a, a voltage, you know, or current imbalance, that's going to be driving us to look at, hey, are we, do we have a high resistance connection? Is something happening on one phase versus all phases in power quality? Um, of course, the stator focuses on that initial inrush, that, that initial transient current we talked about seven to ten times doesn't exist on a soft start, but on a normal cross the line, it's a big tell in terms of the stator health. Uh, the rotors, the reflected impedance, the longer startup and the lower current. I mean, I'm kind of paraphrasing some of this, but, we're, you know, definitely the, you, could, you could go to one of our podcasts about rotors and see, hear a lot more detail and look at our, our other case studies. But I, I do love machine train. In this situation, it was almost, you know, um, you know, we've had some machine train tracking of using inrush on a mortise or windings even, you know, which is not a machine train. But on the other end of that rotor, of that synchronous motor, we had, you know, a machine train fault on a turning table that was creating an anomaly. And we could see that. So the influence passes through the current, and we love the inrush for that. Finally, this case study, a process analysis indication where, you know, we're actually showing that basically... Um, operator error. It was literally it could be another item here. Actually, operator error was was the, the or problem. oversight. Oversight. Maybe, yeah, yeah. It, right. it may no, not maybe. even been just we may have forgot to do it. You right. Know, we forgot to clean it out after the last, or it was a product that they didn't think required that type of cleaning. That's where this process analysis tool of the PDMA I mm -hmm. incorporated into the MC in the Emacs because, of course, naturally we would also say, hey, you just had an elongated start. Maybe we should, when you secure the motor next, let's do a standard test. Absolutely. Let's see if there's been any degradation to check the insulation quality. Check the insulation something? quality. Did we overheat? Check our, our power circuit just to mm -hmm. see that we didn't overheat any of our connections. So there's a lot of the the seamlessness between the I and the MCE Max is, in my opinion, there's nothing like it on the market today. So we're excited about that. And then we back that with the wonderful people at PDMA for support, and it just can't you just can't beat it. Oh my God, it's like a trifecta of things. <laughs> yes, a trifecta <laughs> indeed. Well, Noah, that brings us to the end. Might as well stop there. No that more accolades. Can't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do any better than that. Uh, but anyways, we'd like to thank you for your time and listening. And uh, of course, if you have something that you'd like to share with the group, because in we goof around a little bit, but the reality of this is we're really just trying to educate individuals out there in the reliability world to help them get a better understanding of what to look for when they're looking at data, uh, how to assess it, and if you have problems, come to us and we'll help you out as well. But uh, once again, like I said, thank you. Um, give us a call if you need to to send us data or send it to our email address. That's perfect as well. Uh, Noah, thank you. My pleasure. And to all of you out there, thank you as well for your time and uh, stay safe. And we look forward to uh, until we see you again sometime real soon.